Okay, so we have a quorum of people. So I'm going to go ahead and call to order the meeting. Uh, it's uh, Monday, December 12th, meeting of the Montpelier Planning Commission. We first have to approve the agenda. So if the Planning Commission could take a look at the agenda and I'm open to a motion to approve. I'll just add that the SE group's conversation will be more than just the energy draft. It'll be more broadly what they're working on. Oh, right. Okay. Yep. So do we have a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. Okay. Motion from Brian. Do we have a second? I'm second. We have a second from Gabe. All right. I think Gabe's Gabe's coming in really remotely. I think he's in the car. Um, motion from Brian and a second from Gabe to approve the agenda. All those in favor say aye. 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 You opposed? Motion approved. Um, brings us to comments from the chair. Um, things that come to mind for me is we are, I'm going to assume we're not going to meet next time that's going to be right around the holidays. Um, just thinking that's not going to work for people. Um, so unless anybody has any objection, we'll just plan to meet the second Monday of January for our next meeting. Um, and as far as the upcoming calendar goes, we're trying to finish up these last chapters of the plan, as we all know. Um, but I have every intention of starting in January, starting to get moving on some of the zoning update stuff and the response to the Commerce, Cong uh, Congress for New Urbanism report and uh, the solar shading and just zoning related work as well. Um, and I'm gonna start putting work in myself um, to prepare some things for us and, and get the ball rolling for that. So you can look for that on the um, agendas coming January. We'll start balancing um, out some of these other things. That's all I have. Does anyone else have any updates? Yeah. Um, sorry, I missed the beginning of the meeting, so I don't know if we did we welcome Maria or is is uh, is that on the council agenda for this week? I just wanted to acknowledge that. Um, we have a potential new member or a new member here. I'm not sure where we're at. <laughs> yeah, Maria is Thanks. on the council agenda for Wednesday. So we will have all of our seats filled um, pending Maria's appointment on Wednesday. And I don't know if Maria wants to introduce herself quickly. Sure. Hi. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> I'm Maria Arsenlis. I'm a parent in town and a small business owner, too. Uh, and I'm really excited about joining the commission. That's wonderful. And this is news to me. I missed our last meeting, so I'm a little behind. Um, Cause so that's, that's wonderful, Maria. Thank you so much for offering to apply and joining us. Um, yeah. And also, oh, go ahead. No, 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 finish what you were gonna say. Oh, uh, well, I was, I was kind of moving on, so go for it. Oh, okay. Well, I was just wondering, um, you know, when I started, I didn't get any sort of orientation. And I know before Marcella left, she was talking about that. And I don't know if she was, um, if she made any progress on, on thinking about that. But I was thinking at least one thing that I think it would be nice for new members to have. And we probably didn't do this for Brian either. But it's just if they can get a printout of the updated zoning regulations. Because I found that really helpful when we get I mean, we're working on the city plan right now, but um, when we um, get back into the zoning. Yeah, I think that that's an option. I mean, I mean, that stuff's accessible digitally too, so that, so that you know, Maria, you can um, access, you know, the zoning regulations on the city website. Um, if you want to, uh, if, if, if you're like the kind of person that gets accustomed to things that way. Um, I don't think that we have any assumption that you need to do a bunch of homework, but um, I think one of the best things, and we have been doing this, but it's been since I was been the chair, 
um, which, you know, Marcella didn't get that. And I don't think I was the chair when you came on, Ariane. But I have been uh, meeting with people and just for an hour and doing a walk and catching people up as a form of orientation. Um, and I did that with Brian before he was actually appointed. So, um, and, and I did that with Gabe and um, Jeff and, and other uh, new folks. Um, so yeah, Maria, we can, we can talk offline um, about like, usually it's a walk, but I don't know, it's like 20 degrees right now. So, <laughs> <laughs> so maybe a coffee at a, in an indoor place or something or, or just whatever, or a phone call. Um, but, but yeah, we can connect, uh, and, and, and talk, uh, in that way. Um, and when we do that, I can tell you all sorts of other resources, um, besides just the zoning regulations. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to like, you needed to <laughs> read the zoning regulations. I just, that was just one thing that I found helpful because I personally found it hard to put it all together, looking at it online. So anyway. But that's great, Kirby. I didn't know you were doing that, so that's really fabulous. Yeah, I mean, I've been extending the offer. Um, you know, it's up to people if they want to do it. But that, that's the best way I can think of to do an orientation other than if we wanted to go through the process of developing like an onboarding materials or something. But that's not, we haven't done that. Um, but I can point you to resources and answer questions. Um, but yeah, you know, we should be in touch right now. Um, and welcome, uh, and also welcome Brian, um, officially. Um, so next on the agenda is general business. Uh, and this is where if there's any members from the public who are here to discuss anything that's not on the agenda for tonight, it's your opportunity to do that. So do we have anyone? And it looks like we do have one. Do we have any others besides Peter? Okay, Peter. Hi, I'm Peter Kalman. Uh, I live in Mountain View, and I uh, drop in on this group once in a while to offer them a piece of my mind. <laughs> um, I just want to start out just by saying a few things. Um, you know, I keep, I read a lot what's going on around the rest of the country in Vermont and so forth, and I send those around to people I generally send them to Kirby and Mike and to um, uh, Josh Jerome. So I just want to say that, and I, I get various responses. I just want to say that, yes, affordable housing is a national problem, but it is also a local problem. Yes, affordable housing is made very challenging by construction costs, but there are other significant costs that municipalities like Montpelier can help to reduce or offset. Yes, developers can make more money by building in Chittenden County, but we can also create conditions here with carrots and uh, whether it's dollar carrots or help carrots to encourage a, uh, a, a developer sector down here as well, and, or, and maybe even draw people from Chittenden. Yes, NIMBYism is a factor in limiting affordable housing Montpelier, but it's just a subset of an attitude that permeates American society. And it's one because we've lost sight of the fact that our houses are where we live. Instead, our houses have become the largest part of our assets. And that causes us to want to protect those at all costs for ourselves, for our families, for 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 gen for our you know uh, heirs. But I think what we really need to make clear, and we're going to need to make this clear every time NIMBYism rears its ugly head, is that whatever excuses are made, oh, too many trees are going to be cut down. Oh, what about uh, you know the you know uh, natural resources and so forth? What we need to re remind people of is that this is exactly the kind of behavior that has created segregation, racial segregation, segregation again, ethnic groups again and again over the last 100 years. And it's why we have this cute little town. And we've got to understand that the price of having a cute little town is the suffering of others. 
And I really think that we've got to do something to change the attitudes. They're all going to show up at the meetings, at, you know, and they're going to object to the density uh, uh, changes and so on and so forth. You, we've got to start calling a spade a spade. This is, this is immoral. This is unethical. And this goes against all the things that those very same people actually think they believe. And I, I just want to add to it that we, and here I'm talking to Mike, we need the, 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 the department to begin to take an aggressive, proactive uh, approach, not just to get better regulations, but to streamline and to help people and big developers and individual property owners to be able to actually do ADUs that aren't going to cost them $100,000 to figure out how to divide up their large homes into a smaller units. And if they're older like me, create a, 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 an apartment on the ground floor that is uh, where is, is age appropriate and, and have the upper floors be where other people live. There's so many infill building. There's so many things, but people, particularly seniors, and we have a lot of senior homeowners, don't know how to do this on their own. They're going to need help. And all the government programs in the world and all the, you know, the regulations that are changed aren't going to make a bit of difference if we don't have some very, very strong handholding. I've been saying this for five years, and I'm going to keep saying it. You can't just be passively saying, as, as it was said to me by Audra when I came with my first idea up on College Street, she said, oh, well, have your place surveyed, get an arch architect to draw up plans, come in, and we'll help you. Oh, yeah, right. Spend $10,000, and then, we'll, then you'll help us. How about helping us at the front end? Thank you. Well, thanks, Peter. And um, I, uh, I think you will be seeing some proposals from us in the near future go to city council that are, I think, going to be in agreement with some of the things uh, that you want. And I would encourage you to come and show support when that, when that happens and um, rally people as well. Um, because yeah, we'll need your, we'll need your support um, because we want to do like a lot of what you're talking about. Um, okay. With that, anybody else from the public? Okay. Uh, so then I will turn it over to SE group to show us the progress they've made on the website design. Hi everyone, um, I'm Aiden Eikhoff from SC Group. Um, with cameras turned off, I can't say I see familiar faces, but some familiar names for sure. I'm here today with Julia. Um, we've been, Julia's been doing the bulk of a lot of the drafting and content creation. Um, and we're, but we're sharing responsibilities in a lot of ways. Our last meeting, we kind of gave an update on um, our progress with the drafting the chapters from the planning commission content to then taking them into story maps. We edited some of the uh, content and flow of that, and that is still underway. I think Mike's going to send over some more comments to so that we can really make sure that we're nailing the flow of this. Um, but the last time we said that we would come with a, a draft version of like the landing page for this. So we have some content to share with you today um, for that. It is, it's getting there, but it'll be good for uh, us to have feedback and for this group to have an initial reaction. Um, Julia, is there anything else you want to add in? Uh, no, that's all. We uh, did have a meeting with Mike last Friday to talk about the status of um, the other plan chapters and make sure that our process is tracking along with you all. So, um, you know, if there are any scheduling things that um, the group would like to talk about um, at this meeting, that would be great, too. I think I have the ability to share my screen. Yep. Okay. Oh, 
Okie dokie. Are you seeing a uh, screen with trees? Yes. Okay. You see the trees. <laughs> um, this uh, would be the landing page of the hub site. So the hub site is where we see people who, you know, maybe there's a link from the uh, official city page that says, you know, see the city plan here. Um, this is where it would take them. So there's a little update on what the plan is, uh, what the website is for, or sorry, what the website is for, and then kind of pointing people towards plan resources. So as you scroll, people would get options. These will eventually be clickable. They are not as of now, um, but little icons that will take them to each chapter. Do, do. Um, then we have an idea, as you can see, that's not fully built out yet, but for each chapter to maybe have a statistic that really tells some sort of story about progress or a little snapshot as to where they are. Um, it was, it's it's a goal of Julie and I to kind of, kind of have one for each chapter and, and Mike's gonna help maybe point to a specific stat, but for this group, as you're writing chapters, if you like highlight some important uh, statistics, we can absolutely highlight them here. Um, but anyway, for each of these, there will be, for each chapter, there's going to be some sort of st statistic like this. And then having some, I think this is the placeholder photo, right, Julia? Uh, <laughs> yeah, if you have um, a photo of all of you that you'd like to, to include here, that would be great. Um, but this group is is hard at work for sure. <laughs> um, and have some just kind of point towards where people can find more implementation information. Um, up here, these links will hopefully it'll take you to the plan chapter. I've been having some issues, but it looks like it's going. So this page is where um, if you want to just go to the plan chapters and not scroll to get the icons, you can just jump right here. So as you can see, there is the um, main photo that's in each of the story map pages right now. So this economic development one will take you to the economic development chapter eventually. You're kind of seeing the back of house version. You won't see this thing pop up uh, when this is public. Uh, is so that want... solar array in Montpelier in that photo? It might not be. Um, yeah, so I will update that cover photo. Um, before we had received the energy plan um, data requests uh, last week, I was using, uh, you know, photos that I was able to find online that are um, without any permissions, um, just to make sure that uh, they're okay. usable for, yeah. for these purposes, but yeah, uh, I'm going to replace all the photos in the energy chapter with the ones that we received from the, um, from that data request. So, okay. So yeah, you're on top of it though. We, we <laughs> definitely don't want a finished product, obviously, where we're using other towns. <laughs> <laughs> yes, definitely. <laughs> this is the, the Montpelier city plan and there are yeah. lots of solar photos um that we now have so oh great um yeah including some yeah. you know ribbon cutting type photos as well so there's a lot of great stuff to choose from and as far as the people photos um i would just say before before we get lost and, and forget about and like move on um mike maybe um that would be an opportunity for like people in your office to get um some appreciation um because we don't we don't have any group photos of the planning commission but we but we um i don't know i like the idea of, of if mike has any like nice photos of people are working in his office um especially since the caption there was plan implementation like mm -hmm. they're the ones really implementing i don't know if mike's still there but oh yeah he's there so anyways proceed sorry for the interruption all good, all good. And if there was like a community event, I know we had some outreach events where we were taking photos, but something like that where there is community engagement happening. I don't know how you would fully capture plan implementation in a photo, but 
I like the idea of having some staff people show up here. Um, so there's only three that are in story maps right now, but eventually this will have all 12 sections. Um, plan implementation, there is nothing here right now. John Adams, we still need to connect and maybe we can um, just put an embed frame on this page and use whatever tool that you have created or if we need to try to create something here um, using hub site, which is a little clunky at times, um, we can explore what the best method is there. Do you have any initial, I see you're here now. Yeah, that sounds good. I think planning just to, to embed an iframe is probably the safest, safest bet. Perfect. Um, and then finally, for the additional resources tab, none of these are linked yet, but we see kind of one of these for each chapter so that as you, um, as we link plans in the actual story map text, they can just go right to this page and people can kind of see a little library um, of resources. So if there is the, you know, the Vermont energy dashboard or something like that, that can be linked here. So these are the four general sections that we have worked out right now. Um, willing and welcoming any um, feedback. Let me get back to the main page here. Hopefully it goes there. Okay. What are people thinking about the amount of information and, and the flow of content that there is currently? The landing page? Um, yeah. No, the, that's probably the most built out at this point. So, yeah. So for the planning commission, so this is the, the landing page what we're looking at now. Um, I think it looks lovely. I think it it's not too busy or anything. What what do other people think? Does anybody have feedback for the landing page? I like the I like the icons or the info, like kind of the graphics, quick clicks below. Make it easy. Yeah, that is nice. Is there, is there a section on here? I didn't see if like how to how to read this plan. I'm I'm sorry, maybe that you guys scrolled by that. It's more section. right now. Oh, oh yeah, sorry. Oh, no, I'm I just seeing it I'm more right now just for the website. There isn't I think we're still trying to figure out how uh, and where we would link to like a full text version of this plan where I can see a how to read this plan blurb being really important. If you scroll down, Aiden, um, there's a section there um, next to implementation. Uh, yes. Um, I believe, okay, maybe we did eliminate this. Sorry about that. Uh, but there, there will be some sort of information on this page um, about different audiences um, intended to use this uh, site. So um, if the commission is interested, we can certainly provide like a paragraph or um, or some sort of explanatory text um, to say, if you're a member of the public, you know, th these are some ways that you could um, use this site and the pages that you might want to visit. Um, or if you're a member of the development community, for example. Um, so those are definitely possibilities. Sounds good. Yeah, yeah there's a little, um, that, that sentence here, Julia, um, was just kind of absorbed into this section, but gotcha. I think that it sounds like kind of building out a couple different pathways or things to focus on for different audiences would be helpful. And, and is this where you would uh, explain why, why we, why we're doing the plan, <laughs> I guess, you know, it's, as, as one of the new guys, I'm, I'm just trying to get, I, I was met with Kirby and others to figure out the context for all of this. And certainly they pointed me to a statute. So I assume that's going to be part of this too. This is why we're doing it. This is, this is how you do it. You know, these are the sections we're working on. It sounds like that's yet to be built out, but it's coming. 
Well, it's, that's an interesting question, Brian, because I think there is kind of a threshold question of, you know, the, 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 um, this is the website that takes you through the plan. There's going to be a version of the plan that's more of your classic book. And that would probably have to have the statutory reference, but I'm not sure that the website has to have it. So, and Mike, correct me if um, no. If this I'm is wrong about that. the web. This hub is going to be the the, the city plan. There's not going to be um, a separate printed document. We're going to be doing okay. it all in this. This is going to be the plan. Okay. Uh, okay. So yeah, for I I thought we had talked about there being the like a second more official version, but but now this is going to be what we point to as the official plan. Um, does the statute specify that we have to have a reference? Nope. It doesn't. So, doesn't say it has to be a printed yeah. plan. It's just the plan has to include these. 10, 12 elements in these certain requirements, it doesn't actually give a required format. So that's why we've okay. taken the liberty to say, then we think this is the best approach going forward. 21st century plan. I, I mean, I like that. I'm glad that I'm glad that there's not, you know, unnecessary other things you have to do. So, so returning to like Brian's like question, I mean, how do people feel about um making reference to the statutes on the website i think it can be buried in like the about stuff or i don't know i like how i'm the proponent of less is more um my yeah my only thought or stuck with with this which i think provides a really good framework but instead of like the that that intro paragraph i would love for us to like like let's put our our big idea out there you know like here is we need like a 15 second version of the plan a two minute version and then like the 20 minute to infinity version where you know those very few people are going to dive, dive in but if there's like one or two like themes that tie everything together can we just like hit people with it like right away Montpelier is and like this is our vision like, this is the community we're gonna we're working to build build toward um and get away from like a little bit more like the institutional like this is our plan adopted according to you know title 24 43 whatever um and it doesn't i, I don't think it would take very much to to get there and you know without without actually coming up with that overarching theme it's i don't think we can ask like se group to say like hey can you come up with the overarching <laughs> theme of uh or fun? unless unless like you're inspired and you're like you know what I, i've gone through these and I, i've got it I'm, I'm gonna synthesize all of their their thoughts um so what do what do people uh what do people think about us uh at our next meeting in january spending some planning commission time drafting the intro language for here um for the landing page does that sound sound like worthwhile thing to do that is absolutely something that julia pointed out as well um to really have to start with that vision and i think this is a great spot for it okay um just quickly i don't know maybe i i'd be willing to like throw up a draft for people to noodle um while we're talking about that what what are the big ideas we we do want to cover i mean what what are those big story type notes that we should hit on do you have specific things in mind john i mean housing in and around our our you know walkable downtown housing has just been like the reoccurring theme in every every chapter right yeah um, and and like not only i think framing it also as as 
as a welcoming new inclusivity, like welcoming new household. Um, by focusing on like housing, like we can't, we have to stop using the word like density and um, just, you know, dehumanizing the concept. We're not trying to shove as many buildings as possible in Montpelier. We're trying to create like homes for as many new, new uh, households and, and new residents to come in here and live and, and have an opportunity to experience like the amazing city that we all do. So um, I'm thinking about how to frame that. One thing that comes to mind is talking about how we feel a sense of responsibility to provide housing and inclusivity for the region, considering, you know, we're the capital city and, the, you know, but is responsibility the right word for the tone we want? Or is it more, do we want to use a word with less baggage? It's like a friendlier, like a, we have a desire to provide those things. I mean, let's just say we're gonna do it. Like, <laughs> let's just do it. That's our plan. Month, month, we will, you know, become a community that has housing to accommodate you know, a greater number of people. One question is like, you know, in, in a statement like that, we have a responsibility to provide housing or we are committed to providing housing something like that um is who is we and i think um my suggestion is that this statement should not be coming from the planning commission or like be written in a way where it's coming it you know it could be read that way um but rather just like very general statements about um the major directions um and vision of the of the plan so I mean, when we're when we're using a subject for our sentences instead of we, uh, like the city. The will. city, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. Okay. Um, we kind of in things we write, we kind of use both of those. But um, I, that sounds good. So the city will blah 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 provide housing, walkable communities, inclusivity anything else we want to capture here as the highlights high points of our plan um something maybe about energy or climate change or i mean it all that stuff is related but i, I think highlighting that as well um yeah so like climate change energy that's going to be more related to like the world environment. Um, I mean, is that where we want to focus? Well, I we guess, to... yeah, maybe it, maybe, I don't know. I don't, I'm just brainstorming here because I don't know how detailed we want to get, but just, I think reminding, maybe reminding people that it, I mean, it's all connected, of course, but um, I don't know. I, some, I, I'll, I'll think about that more. Okay. Um, yeah, it's just, it's just whenever I start thinking about like the work we do, I mean, when it comes to the environment, we're thinking local and global environment and different aspects of the plan. So um, I'm just, I just wanted to know if we wanted to specify one over the other or something like that. Um, but I can draft up something I can. Yeah, nice. in, our, in previous sort of visioning exercises, we've we've done this for a variety of towns. I, what I am remembering the steps are is that there's a couple just words that are thrown out, like character, vibrancy, walkability, and then it's kind of crafted into like a vision statement. Julia, is that kind of how you've done it in the past? Yeah, vision statements are can be useful. Um, as just one very long sentence that's supposed to capture the sentiment of the whole plan. Um, and, you know, they sometimes um, communities will use them um, in a lot of different contexts, like that vision statement will um, also function as like a vision statement for the for the whole community and not just the plan, but it's a useful um, tool to just summarize 
some of the um the main themes of the plan but i think a vision statement is is not necessary it's it's not the only way to to capture this kind of information um i think a couple um you know short there are a couple ways that i could see this working in terms of showing this at the start of the um landing page uh one example is um, a couple like value statements um like you know the city of montpelier values the creation of housing for um to allow new residents to enjoy the community or something like that um and just having those couple statements given that this is a um you know web page um we can try to make that more dynamic than just like a couple than just you know a block of text we can add in media or graphics um to spice it up a bit um but yeah value statements could work um i also think you know you could um go abstract with this if you want to you could have a bunch of words that um are emblematic of the goals of the plan so um you know like a word cloud type um thing it could be like housing sustainability um walkability um historic character or something these are also things that you could um you know provide it's just a snapshot of the themes that the plan is uh, concerned with and then um underneath that uh there could be like a short paragraph explaining um you know the context for those words so those those are just um, a couple ideas none of them um you know I, I think a variety of things could work here yeah thanks um what i'm gathering from our previous discussions and 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 i don't know where i'm seeing things is um like john's saying like a, a statement of this is what we're going to do this is what this plan is going to do is kind of um what we're going for for the intro but i'll draft something up we'll kick it around um we'll forward that um to you uh once we have something and you can also feel free to then also give us feedback about you know what could be done with it um yeah, and I don't think okay. there are any right or wrong ways of doing it. I mean, we could um, put this together in the format of of um, almost questions if you, you know, framed it in such a way of saying, you know, to, to answer the question of, you know, what what is a city plan? You know, this is this is where we identify our values and identify our goals as a community and identify pathways um, to to accomplishing them. You know, this could be, you know, how do we create more affordable housing? How do we, you know, um, you know, so you could just lay it out and it kind of relays, communicates to the public. That's what this plan is looking at, is to answer these types of questions. So I think there, there are lots of ways you can think about this same idea. Um, and there isn't a right or wrong way. Um, and I think we'll, we can just think about it and uh, we can talk about it in that first meeting. I'm trying to think I should check to see whatever that January date is. And we'll sit down and talk about it. It's gonna be January 9th. Yep, January 9th. Uh, yeah, so I'll, I'll try to throw something together tonight and kick it around and then people, we search just something to work off of for us to, to modify and get there for that. Besides the landing page kind of intro, is there anything else? Um, content wise that the planning commission or SC group feels like the planning commission should consider and try to contribute seemed like folks had some thoughts on um the different audiences that this um web page is speaking to so maybe um it'd be helpful to hear a little bit more about what that information um and that section should look like on the on the web page who are the audiences that we want to make sure um, have a guide to looking at this resource yeah what i remember before about our discussion with that is just um 
you know, the general public was one where that's kind of what it's mostly oriented toward. And then, um, and then people who are really like looking to delve into like law and policy and just making sure that they have a way to get to the in-depth information that they would want. I, th I feel like our conversations were mostly about, about that. Just thinking in terms of just making sure that the in-depth stuff's easy to reach and that, you know, knowing that it's mostly designed for the general public to get the gist of things. And um, I, I don't, did, did we talk about like having an actual, just like a uh, explanation for like, like, did we talk about writing something about how the plans oriented towards different groups? Cause I mean, I don't remember us like saying that we needed that. Yeah. I don't think we spoke about that. Yeah. So I don't think we necessarily need that unless unless um, other folks feel like it would contribute. I think it's more of just like what to keep in mind in the design process. If that makes sense. Um, it's uh, that's helpful. I, I think with these hub sites and particularly with story maps, um, We've sometimes created a little a little section at the start, or um, you know, a tab that says something along the lines of how to use this site and explains the different types of content that's available. Um, and the hub site is maybe a little bit more straightforward for folks to navigate um, because it looks like a traditional website um, relative to like. You know, an interactive map and a story map. Um, someone might need a, a bit more guidance to to know how to use that and look at that. Um, but is that sort of page um, that explains the content of interest to this group, um, or because I, I do think we can uh, put that together, and that might be helpful um, to just indicate, you know here's all of the information that's provided on this site because people otherwise people may not know that um, they can access the full plan chapters but also the links to the implementation strategies and other things like that I, it may be useful to um, to just list the content um, on a on a page like that uh, what are people's thoughts about about that approach Seems like that would be I think, helpful for some people. Yeah, I think we I think we have to assume that people don't most people don't uh, look at this kind of document every day and don't have any context for it. Uh, because you talk about the general public, so John's comment about you know less is more. But definitely a roadmap of uh, you know, I mean I can tell you as a new the new guy, uh, the difference between aspirations and goals was something I, I looked back at the methodology document about what what what's the difference between those two just just uh you guys are uh way into this uh we want to get ahead of anybody that's never looked at it before that's that's a thought that occurred to me on the section on the landing page um at the bottom where it looks like there was kind of some work in progress explanation um I, I was thinking that too, Brian, where the, maybe the, the most useful thing, yeah, right here for this implementation information, where it says example aspirations. I mean, that made me think that it was going to explain what does aspiration mean? What does goal mean? What does strategy mean? If, if, if the individual chapter pages are using that jargon, then maybe that would be a place to explain that. Um, I'm not so sure, though, that we're building it in a way in which somebody needs to know. Weren't we kind of like slyly using the aspirations as like headers or something and then and then having the goals as kind of statements on there? Yes, in other, word, in other words, that is right. like we're using that jargon, but I don't think you actually need to know those things to if the way that the plan's being being pulled together at the moment. Yeah, um, it says goals and aspirations there. So I guess that is people may want to know what that means there. But uh, but yeah, here in the content. I don't know, Brian, what are your thoughts there? Like, um, 
like this stuff on the left side of the page is the yeah. Yeah. aspirations well, and goals, but it's kind of self-explanatory in the in context. Well, I mean, I my, I looked at this too. I mean, mm -hmm. I mean, nitpicky, but aspirations should come before goals because the way you guys described it and the way I read it, you know, aspirations are the big uh, what we're aspiring to do, and then the goals are the specific, more specific ways uh, or more specific kind of mission within that. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. even if it was aspirations were orange and goals were gray, like you have here, uh, you know, there's something to make sure people understand what, what would, I mean, look, people aren't stupid. It, it's just a matter of, uh, you, you want them to know what, what you're trying to articulate here. Well, that's a, that's a good point. So for, for Aiden and Julia to, to take note of is aspirations come before goals. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. We can um, certainly make that change. Um, and, but uh, just, I don't want to, I don't want to lose all the other stuff around saying too, though. Yep. Um, Given that it's probably going to look like this, Brian, do you think we need to explain some, like on the landing page, what we mean by aspirations and goals? Well, you guys have a template for each section that's the same. I mean, pretty much, as far as I can tell. I mean, I know there was talk of maybe tweaking it here and there, but, yep. um, you know, making it as easy as possible for people to understand what, what it is, I think, without too many words. Uh, is, is going to help them. Like I said, they've never, some people, you have to assume, we have to assume the lowest level of knowledge about things like this, I think, when we put it together. Um, uh, and in terms of saying, here's a, it doesn't have to be very involved. You can just say each, each section articulates, you know, a particular area of the plan. It, you know, uh, we'll talk about, you know, we'll talk about the background. We'll, we'll give you some uh, context and then We'll talk about what our what we aspire to do and how we get there, and how we implement it. You know, stuff like that. I mean, I, I think that's a quick. Again, less is more, as, as John pointed out. But I think uh, letting people know what they're about to read is always, you know, a preview. People love previews. I okay. wonder if it would be helpful, um, you know, to because just thinking about how people might use this site. Say somebody is extremely interested in historic resources, but not really interested in the other topics. And they just click on historic resources um, and they wonder what these goals and aspirations or aspirations goals um, are about. Um, it might make sense to head up each of these goals and aspirations sections with just a short um, link to a, another, um, to a page on the hub site that explains the architecture of the plan. Um, so for instance, at, like right under, um, right at the top there, it could say, um, what are goals and aspirations? What are aspirations and goals? Um, visit this link to learn more about the um, structure of the Montpelier city plan. Um, and then that could, be a very short summary of, of what that is. Um, because, um, you know, I think it's what's important for people to understand about these um, aspirations goals is that they are actionable. Um, they aspirations just in our general understanding of that word sounds like um, something that, you know, is desirable, but may not actually happen but as you know uh this group knows um you know the purpose of writing these things down is to make sure that there could be progress on on these things so um i think it, it might be helpful to define that uh, the other thought john and john mentioned this is but my thought is, you know, you've got the background synergies and, and goals and aspirations there also might be a tab up top that's just you know, I don't know, maybe about this plan that takes you to a different page that has answers some of the questions that you were just talking about, you know, rather than have it all in the landing page of the yeah. hub, maybe the landing page just says, you know, if you're interested in knowing more about 
X, Y, Z, or, or, you know, each chapter will tell you about these things kind of the same way Brian was, was talking about it. It can be just a real short thing on the landing page that says, if you're looking for this type of information, look at the chapter links. If you're looking for detailed policy questions, um, you know, perhaps staff, members of committees, these types of things, you might go to the implementation page to find out specifics of how we do this. We don't need a lot, but we can put them in side-by-side -side boxes that says, you know, the links below are going to, you know, take you to the chapters. The chapters will talk about these. Or you could go to the implementation page. They'll talk about these. If you're in the implementation page, then you'd have that extra tab on top that you could click about this plan. And if they click on it, it would we could have more detailed information that really gets into what's an aspiration, what's a goal, what's a strategy, um, what was our process, what was our purpose. You know, kind of getting a little bit more wordy and wonky into it. And that's just a thought. Yeah, yeah, thanks, Mike. So wanting wanting that information in in one page that we can link to from everywhere versus having like a small blurb of text that shows up in each of the plan chapters. I was just throwing that out as an option to put it in as one, but we certainly if we can digest it down to a small enough piece that we're not losing, you know, a lot of page space. Yeah. If it can get digested down into a pretty tight box that's not using up a lot of our space, then yeah, put it on each page. But mm -hmm. I just think over time, we're going to probably find a number of things that we keep saying, oh, that would be helpful to have. Yeah. Um, you know, because a lot of our plan is about being strategic. Maybe we need to talk about what's strategic and why being strategic is important or you know, the window of this plan is eight years. I don't think we want to be really talking about that on the landing page. We don't want to be boring people with those things. But yeah. if we've got a page that kind of hits a little bit of the wonkiness, then yeah. people who want that information can get it. We could potentially, and, you know, we have four tabs up here. We could do like, this is actually just called introduction or something like that, where it has little bits of information about each. So you have the little blurb, you have the icons, which will be the same as the plan chapters, the this, the stats, and then just a teaser for the implementation if people want to get there. And then there could be like an actual true about the plan tab where we go through the structure, the legality, the timeline and some of like the glossary terms. Um, and then people, we can just link to the about the plan. Uh, but I think, I think explaining at some point in a more, at some point, even if it goes to implementation, explaining between aspirations and goals, I think will be important. And I think for, if this group can nail the definition of how they see it, then we can, we're happy to communicate that, but I'm, it's, it's hard for me to actually verbalize the difference between aspirations and goals right I can, now. I can help you with how we do it. How, okay. Perfect. How we framed it. Yeah. It was um, very specifically written. Okay. So, yeah. So what I'm thinking of doing is uh, coming up with some draft intro language for everyone, for us all to, to pour over. And then also drafting some, I'm going to call it bottom of the landing page language, but that's it's describing the um, basics of the the terminology that goes into the plan. Mm -hmm. um, both of them try to be as succinct as possible, but the idea with the top part being like the capture the reader's attention story, like what mm -hmm. like what John was talking about a while ago, um, and then the and then the bottom stuff is just like succinct um explanation of, of you know what we we're just now talking about so i'm thinking if we start there and we're comfortable with that then that then we'll be in a position to see whether we we feel like we need that additional page of explanation or not okay mm -hmm. um so 
so yeah, I'll I'll send that around before our next meeting. Perfect. Yeah, I mean, just, I try to when I am looking over websites, I do try to like be careful about the amount of text that's used. Just thinking about my own personal willingness to read block text on a website. Um, so whenever there's ability to like make it bullet points or like we can make it into a little image like we did something like this. So, um, you know, this is probably like this text doesn't need to stay, but probably not much longer than something like this would be appropriate for both of those sections. Right. Yeah, that's what we'll do. Perfect. Um, so for our, well, actually I'll pause really quickly. Does anybody have any other initial reactions from the quick first scroll through the hub site? I, I think we can talk about it a little bit more. My thought was the, the box at the bottom of this landing page that Kirby was going to rewrite, I thought might be more appropriate in the actual implementation page rather than on this front page but that's something we can talk about in january that that would that was just my observation and i also might move those statistics my thought was i would have moved the statistics above the the page uh the the block of the 12 tabs yep absolutely and we'll have to be careful about you know there's going to be 12 of these as well. So how to, how to organize those. I might take them just, uh, I don't know, make, maybe like create different sizes or make it a little bit more visually interesting. So it's not just a bunch of icons. Um, but is I it, think that is makes it possible. Sense. Is it possible that the statistic icons actually just live in the corresponding um, city plan page? Just, yeah, just thinking long, longer terms. To keep to keep it uncluttered here, maybe um, those would be a good feature in the the actual chapter pages because they seem a little bit out of context here anyway. Yeah, and I think our vision for them was kind of like a community snapshot that had again that little teaser of. Um, you know, if you saw that 60% of the renewable energy or something was was created for the town, would you then be more interested in like reading how they're going to get to 100 or something like that? Um, but agreed, like we want to make sure that this tells the story we want to tell. So whether or not that's just, okay, this is the plan chapter, this is the city plan, here's the chapters, go read them and have a little bit more of the snapshot in the actual chapters themselves. That's absolutely a strategy that we could take. Yeah, I'm open to either one. Just threw that out there while we were talking mm -hmm. about the, the options. Um, because, yeah, I, I, but, I, but I, I love the graphics and the, and the way that they're used to capture people's attention. I mean, that's absolutely great value you guys are adding there. Um, does also, anyone have, oh, go ahead. I'm just saying it opens the opportunity a little bit to like the energy one is full of statistics. So if we do move that section to the energy chapter, it opens the door to have maybe three or four highlight statistics or graphs or charts there, um, versus just one from each. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I like how things like this could put the chapters into, a, to help people understand a, a perspective on the chapters. I'm sitting here, I'm, I'm like way meta thinking it, I think, but mm -hmm. if we're trying to tell the story of the whole city on icons like this, then it's like Mark Twain, lies, damn lies and statistics kind of thing where, for instance, when we, if we're saying that, if, if we're trying to describe our city and say 66% of residences are, are historic structures, does that seem to imply that it's a really big deal to us to get people into historic structures, you know, or like, you know what I mean? Which is, that's actually probably a controversial topic, really, if you dig into right. how people feel. There are some people who think that, yeah, the whole city should be 
shut down and historic and made into basically a historic park. And then other people who were like, let's not fixate on that and let's find people places to live. So, so, so yeah. for instance, you know, like this, like I'd hate to inadvertently tell a different story because somebody else has a different perspective of our, um, yeah. but again, I know that that's reading into it a lot. No, I mean, when I first saw that, I was like, that's just a bunch of energy and efficient homes. Like that's absolutely my perspective on that statistic, which I know is covered in the plan. And there are, you know, ways that you can and modernize and, you know, be more energy efficient. But I, I completely agree. There's multiple, multiple ways to interpret these. And I, I think that goes to the question you were talking about Kirby and, and Aiden, you mentioned it earlier about the, the story to tell. I mean, what are we talk? What are we trying to communicate on the landing page? Um, and I think we just have to. Once we know what that is, um, we want to capture them. We want to grab people if they if they click on it and they get here. We kind of want to grab them and make sure that they 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 want to move forward. And so, you know, what's the city plan? Why is it important? Um, and just try to get those few pieces uh, to, to capture them. And if we can use statistics to go through and, you know, as I said, as and I, and I was just throwing stuff out when I said, have them in the forms of questions, you know, uh, how do we get more affordable housing? And then there's, you know, there's an icon, you know, only 32% you know, of housing in Montpelier is affordable. Um, now we've made, you know, now we've put the statistic and we're, we've started to communicate people. Why is the city plan important? Because we want affordable housing and only 32% of our housing is affordable. We want a clean planet and, you know, uh, only 53% of our energy is renewable. Um, and these are the things that our city plan is going to try to address. Now we've communicated what we're going to be talking about in the plan, why it's important, and hopefully we've captured people. And whether that's in questions with these things or whether it's with pictures or whether that, that I think is what we want with the landing page. People hit it. What is the city plan? I don't even know what this city plan is. You, you click, you, you see the city plan, and we can very quickly grab you and let you know what this plan is about. And we're not getting into defining aspirations and goals. We'll do that in a bit. Um, but we capture people and we have them start to be able to know why, why they want to explore a few things on this page. And then we can go through and say, and, and we talk about it in 12 different chapter areas. And here are the 12 chapter icons. Each chapter will tell you these pieces of information. And if you're more interested in the details, go see the implementation page where we talk about very specifically how we're going to do it. Um, and that, and that's just one way of here's the story we want to tell and we're going to do it. And I think you as the planning commission, we as me as staff, we've got to decide what the story is. And then that will help dictate which pieces we grab and how we use them. Because we don't have to do a, an icon for every single chapter. I think we just need to do enough to tell people this is what we're doing and this is what's important. Then when we get to the page, we'll have more of these icons that says why historic resources are important. 66% of people live in historic buildings. That's why historic resources are important. And when you're saying icon in this case, you're talking about the, the statistics based on the statistic the, icon in the this other. case. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I do want to make just make sure I understand the, the icons we have for the chapter pages. Um, that's all of them, right? Yeah, I think that is all of them. Okay. Because, okay. And this thing I'm going to try to write up, I'll, I'll mention that, that there's 12 chapters. Because we haven't we haven't known how many chapters we're going to have all along. So <laughs> I guess 12 is a number. I'm, I'm learning that. Okay. Uh, actually, it might be 11, because I don't know if we're actually going to do governance. That, has, that, that was an idea that we haven't actually written a governance chapter. So it might be 11. We could replace that with the icon for the implementation plan, though, if we were trying to keep it there is symmetrical. There's some humor to not having a governance plan, but <laughs> <laughs> um, it will, you know, 12, having 12 is aesthetically mm. ideal, but I don't want to create more work. Symmetrical. 
and we eventually do plan to have a, a, a governance. And as I said, we can always put an icon in for the implementation plan as well. Um, mm, right. which takes you to the implementation, same thing as the implementation page, but. Yeah, no, that could be good. I like, I like where the conversation is going and really nailing down the story and we can create whatever graphic support to tell that story. Um, so yeah, don't feel like any of this is set in stone. Icons and charts are super easy to make. Um, so yeah, please feel like there's still creative freedom in telling that story. Uh, I think we just mostly wanted to get confirmation on the, the general buckets of content that we wanted to have on this website. And I feel like we have good direction on that. Yeah, one additional thing um, that I'm hearing is, you know, really wanting to draw people in um, and keep them, you know, they might click on it, but to uh, really encourage them to peruse the site and um, having engaging text and telling a story is a great way to do that. Um, but you can also do that um, through, um, you know, just activity on the page. So, um, things like video footage or like GIFs, things like that, um, that are dynamic, um, are really appealing to people. So, um, if that's of interest, we can, um, look into incorporating, um, that type of media, um, which could be helpful in just making this, um, a more visually interesting page. I think we, we definitely are counting on, uh, SE group using photos and other appealing, you know, aesthetically appealing things to help us. Um, we definitely don't think that our whatever pros we come up with is going to alone capture people. <laughs> so I think we're definitely counting on that. Uh, as far as uh, GIFs or videos, I mean, I would be inclined to defer to you to know um, what would, you know, practically work. Um, because I'm having a hard time imagining that, like, um, it seems like a video that's playing with audio is going to take all the attention, all the eyes away. And then I don't know if people would find a GIF annoying or not. These are just things, I mean, I don't know. This is why I'm deferring to you because I do not really know. Um, do, do, we, do any other folks have thoughts about options for things or <clears throat> any other thoughts? Um, does SE have anything else they were planning to show us? Nope, not at this point. Our next steps are to, um, you know, kind of continue to noodle on the hub site. I think we'll pause a little bit on that until this group has had, um, more time to provide edits or feedback and copy and all that. Um, we have highlighted on our little uh, next steps list to do our draft of the utilities and facilities chapter, natural resources and arts and culture. It's my understanding that utilities and facilities will get confirmed this evening. Okay. Um, so yeah, a follow up on, you know, green light, red light on utilities and facilities would be fantastic. And then I think our housing chapter is the next one that is queued up for conversion into story maps. That's great. And you've probably collected that housing is a pretty big deal for us right now because it's a, it's a hot topic, but it's also, I mean, it's just, it's a hot topic for a reason. It's yep. really needed. Um, so that would be a good one to have as, um, a, you know, very high quality page for. Absolutely. Do we have anything else for SE? Anybody have any other ideas? Everyone understand the, the plan at the moment? Okay. All right, well, we can move on. Um, thank you so much, Julie and Aiden for the time. Yeah. and all the work. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. We appreciate it very much. Okay, let's Bye. move on. Uh, 
So yeah, we have to do the, the final review and approval of utility and facilities implementation, implementation strategy and, uh, and the chapter. Um, so I'll turn it over to Mike to tell us where we are with that. But still, I mean, it was really, I think the only thing that was outstanding because we had already gone through in the first meeting in November and kind of reviewed and approved everything. And then we were going to approve it in the second meeting, but then a question came up on um, the Act uh, 174. And so the follow up on that is that. Um, and I was pretty sure I knew what it was at the time, but I just wanted to double check. Most of what Act 174 was getting at was for al allowing local municipalities or regional commissions to be able to comment and have more control at the, um, the PUC for siting. So our energy committee actually decided they as much as we wanted, they wanted to participate because we were the capital city. At the same time, they actually were just as comfortable to not participate at all because opening the window up for the municipality, because right now we can't, I mean, we, we have very little participation at the PUC. Um, but if we do this and comply with Act 174, then we get more comment, which actually in a strange way gives more opportunities for appeals and more opportunities for neighbors and people to um, oppose projects if we start get, getting ourselves involved and participating in the process. And so the Energy Committee was actually happy not participating in Act 174 and the advantages it gives it. Most of the reason that was passed was because there were communities in Addison and Rotland and in other counties for communities that did not want or wanted to limit the amount of solar projects that were going into their towns. So a lot of 174 is actually a good tool for opposing projects um, as opposed to encouraging the rollout of those projects. So that's why the Energy Committee actually wasn't that keen on participating in in kind of going through that process. So I certainly can go through and, and we can do the do more work on that. And um, it was mentioned more with regards in this case to the utilities should we have because it is was the utility should we have more of a conversation about Act 174. Um, it also could apply to the energy chapter and might actually apply more to the energy chapter. Um, and this is this is a planning decision up to you guys. The, the, as I said, the energy committee's recommendation would be not to do that extra effort. And for the, um, last week, it was Aaron's question. And all he was asking was just to make sure that we had taken a look at it and there wasn't something that we were missing because he remembered the conversation from the past and based on the energy commission's you know discussion i think we'd be okay to move forward but i don't know if there's other other thoughts on that but that's what i remember from our last meeting it sounded like an aaron question i wasn't here but that's that's where i went with that um just because he used to you know work in that area or still does i think um so uh how do people feel do they need do, you, do we need Mike to walk through anything more? Um, uh, do are people feeling comfortable to vote, or do we need to discuss the strategies any further? I figure we're we're going to start with the the goals, aspirations, and strategies, and then move to the chapter. I think we've looked at it a couple of times. I mean, if the other, if there's a people are ready to vote, I mean, I would move that we go ahead and move it forward. We can see what the SE group is doing. They're taking our sort of general trajectory and then turning it into, you know, something that fits the, you know, what that's going to look like. So it's not going to be word for word anyway. Um, so I, I feel like it was, 
I don't know if you saw this also, but Aaron had condensed some of the, the goals that were sort of overlapping, right? Like I think originally there were eight or nine and now there's, you know, a handful. So um, anyway, I would move that we move forward with it, send it to Mike and SE group. Okay. Yeah. So just to catch me up since I, I, I had the miss last time. So yeah, Aaron was planning to do that. Um, and, and so I take it, he has done that. I haven't actually read it yet, but, and everyone was happy with rewritten goals and, that's what we're, yeah, we plan to approve that. Great. Um, okay, well, Gabe uh, has moved and what I was understanding from what he was saying is he also, you were also talking about the chapter language too. You feel like that's been finalized as well. So your motion includes approval of the, um, the goals and aspirations strategies as well as the chapter language? Yes. Okay. Um, so do we have a second to Gabe's motion? Second. Okay, we have a second from John. Uh, do we have any discussion before we vote? Does anyone need, any, need anything more about this? Okay, so um, go to vote. Those in favor of approving the goals, aspirations, and strategies, and the chapter language for the utilities and facilities chapter, say aye. 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 Opposed? Can you abstain? Okay, so that's 5-0. Um, that's great, that's great. And thank you again, uh, thanks, I don't, I don't know why I said again, for the first time, Gabe, thank you for covering last week. <laughs> Seems like things uh, went smoothly. Um, and since we have some time left, um, we have some minutes to approve. Um, so if everyone can take a look at the minutes from November 28th that Mike sent. And I'll take a, let us know if there's any edits that are needed. And when people are ready, I'll take a, Motion to approve those. Can move approval of the minutes from November 28th. Okay, we have a motion from Ariane. Does anybody need more time? Uh, do we have a second? Second. Okay, second from, is that from John? Second from John. Okay, those uh, in favor of approving the minutes say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, minutes are approved. Um, so, okay, that was, a, that was a good meeting. I think we got into the Did, meet, did we uh, want to um, uh, check on uh, the uh, Bethel? I don't know if he or she um, had any questions or comments. I, I had thought uh, that was somebody who was part of the SE group, but apparently not. So, uh, Sure. Yeah, I was just going to let it go because, you know, the no one spoke up during the, um, you know, open okay. business section. But, um, yeah, if before we adjourn. You're always welcome to reach out. <laughs> we, before we adjourn, if there's anyone from the public still here who is wanting to reach us at all now it's a good time we can revisit that okay um with that um uh again we're we'll meet on uh january 9th um second monday of january um we'll continue to do plan work and that's we're also going to start getting into zoning work again i just want to make sure that we don't Put that on the back burner for too long and we, we really do need to get rolling again on that um also in the meantime people watch your emails and um i'll send some language around for website copy okay and with that do we have a motion to adjourn second stuck here forever again <laughs> <laughs> i move to adjourn all right thank you gabe
Do we have a second to adjourn? A second. Okay. And those in favor of adjourning say happy holidays. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Okay. See everyone in the new year.